Tune those fiddles, floss that tooth, and uncork that moonshine. The Lovecraft Country Time Jamboree is back. Every week, I'll be taking a look at each episode from the biggest horror series of 2020 as it drops. There will be spoilers from here on out, but I'll try to keep them on the minimal. So there you go. You've been warned. Let's get to it. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights, a part of the Kings of Horror Network. I'm M.L. Miller. While you might be watching this video on the Kings of Horror Network, I urge you to click over to my M.L. Miller Frights page and give it a like, share with your buddies across the electronic superhighway, click subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Please get the word out to new folks so we can make the Kings of Horror Network and M.L. Miller Frights bigger and better. Lovecraft Country, Season 1, Episode 10, Full Circle, is streaming on HBO and HBO Max. It was created by Misha Green, Jordan Peele, and J.J. Abrams. And this final episode of the first season was directed by Nelson McCormick. Well, this was definitely a series on HBO. What I thought might be the horror event of 2020 turned out to be something else. Lovecraft Country had a ton of buzz going into it, and now that the season is over, some are over the moon for it, and hopeful that there are many more seasons to come. I am not one of them, but I'm glad this series has made some people happy. I understand for many, simply being a series focusing on the African American experience in America is enough. The fact that this series exists is some kind of triumph. But that sort of negates some of the pretty amazing storytelling in shows like The Wire, Treme, and even Watchmen on HBO before this series. The black experience was center stage in those series, but the fact that the experience was black wasn't the entire point of the series. Those series allowed the viewers to become enmeshed with the characters, the culture, and the environment without screaming to the cheap seats about what it was all about. Those series were smarter, more nuanced, and had wonderfully entertaining storytelling that could be watched and rewatched. And that, unfortunately, is not Lovecraft Country. Unlike those previously mentioned series, this one was supposed to be horror centric, utilizing the Lovecraft mythos to tell a story set in a turbulent racial time in America. This was an era where it often wasn't safe for a black person to travel alone, something that is still a fact today, sadly. It was an era where laws in the books didn't always reflect the laws of the land, again, very familiar with today. The bones to tell a nuanced story is there, as evidenced with the first episode where Tick, Letty, and Uncle George go on a perilous journey to map out uncharted territory and list them as either safe for blacks to travel or not. Unfortunately, somewhere in between the writing and the final series we got, the producers of Lovecraft Country either lack the talent to adapt it with any nuance or skill, or more likely didn't have faith in the audience's ability to get the point unless they made the themes as obtuse and obvious as possible. That, unfortunately, is Lovecraft Country. Episode 10 is entitled Full Circle, and in attempts to pull all of the threads together of this loosely fitting story, it does so about as clumsily as you'd think. I said last week that this episode would be leading to a big confrontation, but I wasn't sure exactly what it would be. This is not a good sign that your series is being told in a strong manner when going into the final battle, you really have no idea what the stakes are or who's fighting who. Yeah, I suppose it was to be ramping up to the autumnal equinox, and Tick, played by Jonathan Majors, was supposed to be donating his blood to the sacrifice so that Christine, played by Abby Lee, could become immortal. That should have been what this series was driving towards all this time, and it was, sort of, because everybody was repeating it about three times an episode, up, and, up to and including this one. Speaking of repeats, I'm not sure why we had to return to the old lady to get the book again in this episode when we did the exact same thing last time. 
Just because you say it's the point of the series and repeat it until you're blue in the face doesn't make it true. Because so much time is spent on more interesting characters than Tick and Letty, giving them nuanced, interesting stories played by very good actors, the so-called point of the story was overshadowed by much of the series. Instead, I was more interested in seeing Hippolyta and Dee's relationship fleshed out, or Ruby's troubles with class, sexuality, and her own identity delved into. And what did we get? It's spoiler time. Ruby is killed off camera. Her feelings for Christine are addressed in one line. Have you ever? And Ruby responds, no. Her difficulties with her lighter skin colored and much smaller in stature sister, Letty, is never really addressed. Her aspirations of work in a high class store t was tossed out of the window after one episode. Everything that made her interesting is scrapped so she can go on a family road trip with the gang and sing a happy song together. Hippolyta and Dee's characters don't fare well either. I said from the beginning I'd love to see these two characters go on the road taking on the Lovecraftian and human horrors more than Tick, Letty, and George slash Montrose. Their mother-daughter relationship was interesting and fresh, especially played by these actors. But instead, Dee seemed to be the only one with a lick of sense in this entire series. She states the obvious in this last episode. Hippolyta left her child to go off and have some funky experiences in the future for 400 years. She left her child alone to be possessed and crippled. And when Dee confronts her on it, Hippolyta simply tells Dee how great it was in the future living out Dee's dreams as the character in her comics. Hippolyta should have wanted Dee to have these experiences, but instead she selfishly took them for herself. And then what does she do? She fucking leaves her traumatized and crippled daughter again in the car, alone, with a forest full of monsters. Hippolyta went from being an interesting character to worst mother ever, simply to have viewers with children live out some fantasy where they leave the burden of motherhood behind and have adventures on their own. With those three characters' fates wrapped up so quickly, one might think we could maybe address Montrose's issues with his sexuality, or maybe address the fact that Montrose murdered a trans Native American in cold blood six episodes ago. Nope. Montrose gets one significant scene in this episode where, after seeing blood pour out of his son's arms for over five minutes, Montrose thinks he's able to get Tick up and walk out of there. And why the hell did Christine need all of Tick's blood? She slices open both arms, but only bathes in the blood under one of them, letting the rest of it fall to the floor and get ruined, I guess. It's got dirt all over it. This show is right. All white people are selfish. I kid, but really, Lovecraft Country, could there have been one redeemable white person on this show? Must every white person either be a racist, a demon, or both? Surely there was one white person in all of Lovecraft Country, and beyond, that had some redeemable qualities. I'm pretty sure the African-American people watching the show would understand one or two might not have had evil intent. There's a lot of us white people around. Surely the showrunners, the cast, and the viewership have met a white person that was okay. If not, they need to get out more. We're not all that bad. While the black guy dies first cliche was and still is an issue in horror, at least the black guy wasn't the bad guy in all of those horror movies. Hell, they even concocted up a white person just to destroy him in this episode. And when you introduce your big bad in the final episode only to kill him, you've got it. That's bad storytelling. Just like the show, this review is all over the place. But there's so much wrong with it. It's hard to encapsulate it all in one sitting. Full Circle was hot, messy garbage. Too much was left to be wrapped up in this single hour-long episode. Too little was at stake. While there were sacrifices, they seemed unnecessary, simply to pull at heartstrings while people who actually use their brains were pulling out their hair. Letty's final message about white people never having magic again was especially pointed and out of place. Yep, I'm not a fan of Lovecraft Country. Not because it's about the black experience in America. I'm glad stories like that are being told and think more of them should be. But I only hope that they are told smarter and more entertaining than the disappointment that this series was. Thank God it's over, so I can check out some other streaming series in its spot. I guarantee I won't be covering a second season of Lovecraft Country. It's too much of a mental chore to get through. That'll be it for today.
If you like this video, please pound that thumbs up button. Share this video with your social media addicted pals. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on mlmillerwrites.com. That's where you can also find the countdown for my best in horror, which is going to be running all month through October. Don't forget I have two new horror comic book trade paperbacks you should look for. Grave Trenches is out right now in all comic shops, and Pirouette Collecting Never Before Published Issues will be out in late November and early December. Diamond order code APR201712. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for alerts to be the first to see my future videos. Thanks so much for your time, and take care. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be Stuck inside your reality